Remind me why you only garden and raise beds, Nicole? That's a question I get so often. And so in this video, I wanna walk you through three reasons why I primarily garden in raised beds and why my company, both Rooted Garden and Gardenary, focus almost exclusively on raised bed kitchen gardens. So there's three reasons I found over the years that make raised bed gardening make so much sense. And I'm gonna walk you through those three reasons. As we go along, I'm gonna to explain to you the layout and design of my own raised beds so you can get a sense of what's possible even in a smaller space. So here in the Chicago area, I'm in the a northwest suburb of Chicago. Um, I set up this kitchen garden on the side of my home. So um, I have kind of a traditional farmhouse looking home and um, most of the sunlight wasn't great in the backyard. So we decided to put it here on the side. You can see the whole process of me setting up this kitchen garden in my book, Kitchen Garden Revival. You can check it out at the link below this video. So about three years ago, we set this up. Is that right? Two years ago, sorry, two years ago. And um, so we tore out, there was like a sidewalk here. We tore the space out and we decided to put six raised beds in the space. So the total space, this area right here is about 10 feet wide and the length from the front of my garage to the back of the gate is about 30 feet. So you're looking at a general garden space of 300 square feet from, from the front to the back, all right? So 300 square feet. I knew that I wanted the garden to feel a little bit like an enclosure, like you're kind of coming into a special space. So that's why I decided to have two beds on each side of the garden space rather than one bed right down the middle. That could have been an option I could have done instead of two beds that are narrower, I could have done really wide beds going down the same space. So each of these beds is um, two feet tall. They are about two and a half feet wide and they are about seven feet long. So that makes each of these beds about 15 square feet, which means 15 times six, can you do the math? It's about 90 square feet of gardening space. So my total garden area is about 300 square feet and my total gardening space is about 90. Um, so now you're gonna get to see why I love raised beds because all the things I can grow in a small space. So that brings me to reason number one to use raised beds and that is productivity. So if you think about um, suburbs versus city. So I live in the suburbs. Um, so our, our, you know, the way we spread out in the suburbs, we go wide, right? So the homes are wide. Um, a lot of them, some of them aren't even two stories high. There's one story. And anytime you need to spread out in the suburb, you just go a little bit further out, right? And then in the city, things don't go wide, right? They go up and down. So instead of having these lower, smaller homes, you have homes and condos that are like, I don't know, thousands of feet tall. Um, so I want you to think of raised bed gardening like being in the city. So in a raised bed, instead of plants sprawling out and wide, plants are gonna go up and down. So let me show you what I mean. Um, so in my raised beds, these plants said generally, if you were to read the um, plant tag, it's gonna say that this plant would need one square foot, two square foot, maybe even three square feet in a garden. Those directions are for a row garden rather than a raised bed. So they're assuming you're gonna be planting these plants in the ground. So instead of these roots being able to go really deep in a raised bed, they're gonna be more shallow when they're in the ground and they're gonna grow more like a suburban um, community would, right? So the plants are gonna spread their roots out really wide, more on the surface of the soil and the plants then are gonna spread wide as well. But in a raised bed, the roots have the opportunity to go much deeper, and then the plants are gonna grow in a more vertical fashion. So we can plant lots more plants all together really tightly, and then we can use other vertical elements like trellises. So again, in this case, these peas that generally will be prescribed to be planted three, four, five inches apart from one another in the ground, when they're here in a raised bed, they're gonna send their um, they're gonna send their roots deep into the raised bed, and then they'll get to grow vertically. So they'll go all the way up the trellis, maybe even over the top. 
So just like, a, um, what are those called? Skyscraper, just like a skyscraper in the city where their, their growth is either deep in the basement or way up high, all the growth in a kitchen garden is similar. So you get to pack a lot more in a small space when you're growing in a raised bed. You've got more root growth and more vertical growth. Productivity also increases with raised beds because you get to plant so much earlier. So with my raised beds, my soil warmed up as early as late February here in the Chicago area. Now I actually came out and shoveled snow off of my raised beds. I was so desperate to get out here. So there was snow piled up, but as soon as I got the snow off the beds, the soil, the first say three or four inches of the soil warmed up and I could plant in these beds very early, like the end of February, early March. But when I went out to my front garden, I have a pollinator garden that's in ground in front of this space. I could not even get a shovel into the first inch of the soil. It was way too cold. So the productivity goes up, not just because you can plant more in a small space, but because you can plant earlier and later. So you end up getting to grow much more of the season when you are growing in raised beds. The other thing about productivity in raised beds is the drainage. So most of the plants that we like to grow in a vegetable garden, like cabbages and kales and peas and radishes, they don't like staying really wet. So they like to be watered often, but they don't want their roots to sit in water. Well, if you're in the ground, oftentimes you may be in a spot where there's not great drainage. And when that happens, most of these plants are kind of sitting in water for too long, which can cause rot or mold or mildew or just cause the plant not to flourish. But in a raised bed, we've got this excellent drainage system where gravity is working in our favor. So even though I water these gardens often, like every single day, um, when I come to the garden each day, I see that the soil's kind of moist, but it's not soaking wet. So I know that these plants, they're well watered, but they're not sitting in water. Their roots aren't just, you know, sitting in a bathtub. So that's another benefit for productivity for raised beds is the drainage. So that is reason number one, productivity. Plant a ton in a small space, grow up instead of out. Um, start earlier and later in the gardening season and then have fantastic drainage for your garden. Finally, with productivity, it's the fact that you get to set it up perfectly the first time. So oftentimes with a row garden or when you're gardening in ground, you're gonna need to give yourself season after season to amend and build that soil up. It's very rare that you'd walk into a situation where your soil is the right composition for growing vegetables from the start. But with a raised bed, because we put these beds in here, then you're gonna get to start with the best soil right away. So it's gonna give you success in the garden so much faster than if you were taking years to amend and get great soil in the ground. So productivity, that could I could just end the video right there. That's number one, but I've got two smaller reasons that I'll walk you through real, real quickly. So the next reason is convenience. Now, when I started Rooted Garden, I was doing gardens for clients all over Houston. Some of them didn't want raised beds. They wanted to do in-ground gardens. And I was a yes girl at that point. I was just starting my business, so I would do whatever anybody wanted me to do. So I agreed and I did a few in-ground gardens with clients. And let me just say, those beds were so hard to tend. So I, um, my company would do maintenance for these clients too. So we'd set up the garden and then go back and take care of them. And I would find I would head back into those spaces and the ground would be muddy. Um, it would be like lots of this, you know, where I'm literally like on the ground, kneeling, working in the yard. And it was just hard to tend those gardens. Um, well, as my company kept growing, I would do one foot tall gardens and then ended up with clients who even asked for two foot tall gardens. Well, let me just say the two foot tall gardens absolutely spoiled me. So tending a one foot garden isn't terrible, but you can imagine that's about at this level, right? So you still need to bend down and you're gonna need to, you know, kind of reach quite a good bit. You're taller than being on the ground, but still not that tall. Well, these clients who had two foot tall gardens, I would come in to take care of these gardens and literally, I could just bend over like this and suddenly I'm at the plant level. So I found that the convenience made me wanna go out into the garden more um, because I didn't have to like 
put on big boots and big gloves and wade out into the mud um, because there wasn't all this work. I could literally just slide into the garden, tend a little bit, harvest a little bit, and then head back inside. My shoes stayed clean. I didn't get dirty through the process and I was going out into the garden more often. My own garden and I was more inclined to help my clients' gardens as well. So convenience is a huge factor, especially as we're learning to make the garden a part of our lives again if we haven't done this before or in years. So convenience is number two. And then the third reason is aesthetics. Now I know this isn't the number one reason for gardening, but we all know that plants are beautiful and gardens are beautiful. And I have to say that raised beds to me just elevate a garden space and make it beautiful all year round. In Houston, we go through different periods of time with our clients where the gardens may be bare or things are not really growing that well yet, or we've just replanted. And in those moments, there's not a ton of green, there's not a ton of growth, but the raised beds and the trellises just provide this kind of lasting, enduring beauty in their yard um, all season long, all year long, actually. And I found that when you use raised beds, it becomes like a, a structural piece, a hardscaping piece in your landscape that really can become a feature, even if plants aren't growing there yet. So I was stunned by this when I did a first, one of my first clients, I asked her for a testimonial after the project was done. And she wrote, she said, best money we've ever spent on a home improvement project. And I thought, oh, that's interesting that she sees this as home improvement. And I realized the raised beds really give that idea, you know, when you're setting up a garden because it's not just plants, right? And it's not just in the soil. It's like this, it's this piece, it's this structure, it's this feature of your yard that can stay beautiful all year long. So, like I said, not the primary reason for raised beds, but definitely um, one of the reasons why I love doing them for myself and also for our clients, both at Ruta Garden and with Gardenary. So those are three reasons, productivity, convenience, and aesthetics. Three reasons why I love growing in raised beds and why I will never go back <laughs> to growing in the ground. I still love growing some things in the ground like my herbs and potatoes and you know there's still a lot of things that can belong and grow well in the ground but if you're growing annual vegetables I truly believe that setting up in a raised bed kitchen garden is going to give you tons of production help you grow much more throughout the year it's going to make gardening more easy and convenient for you so you actually want to get out there and become a gardener and it's going to look beautiful all year long all right, so have I convinced you? I hope so. Listen, I have tons of resources all about setting up a raised bed and actually producing an entire kitchen garden. So my book, like I said, Kitchen Garden Revival is available, but we also have raised bed instructions and my entire online course, Kitchen Garden Academy. So you can check those out below this video. Hopefully I've convinced you that raised beds are the bee's knees when it comes to setting up your new kitchen garden. And I can't wait to see the raised garden that you make in your own space. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.